this is the Provoke Prawn, and I'm here to show you how to set up the NZXT F120 and F140 RGB core fans, how to wire them, connect them up, and the logic for doing so, with some hints and tips along the way. Now, these are obviously the 120mm versions, which come with their own RGB controller, and two cables per fan, one power, that you can see here, and the other one for RGB lighting. Now there is a logic to the wiring of these fans. I'm going to show you how to set them up and where to plug them in and the different options available so that you can end up with them in your case. As you saw at the beginning, I'm using the NZXT N7 Flow RGB and I'm going to show you the wiring logic that I use there. So as standard, the three pack of fans comes with this little RGB controller which just controls the RGB. So you can see you can connect three fans up to that and then you have the connectors for that to connect it up to the motherboard. Now the fan power for the control of the speed is controlled by your motherboard software and BIOS, and you'll need to plug them into system fan headers on your motherboard. So on this Gigabyte motherboard, for example, you can see system fan headers on the bottom right. You'll find them in various different positions on many motherboards, usually along the bottom side and sometimes on the top. And you can connect those up with relative ease. Now, obviously, with just three fans, it's pretty straightforward because you can just connect up those three fans to three separate system fan headers on your motherboard and then position them in different places in your case. But we'll get to more later on as well. Now, obviously, the RGB controller needs to be connected as well. And that needs two connections. The SATA power that you can see here, which is a flat daisy chainable cable, which comes with your power supply unit. I've done a guide, by the way, separately on how to wire PSU and also the logic for wiring generally throughout the case. If you find that useful, check out the links in the description if you want to know more. Essentially, this cable on this modular power supply plugs into the SATA connector down the bottom. This is the same cable that's used for SSDs and hard disk drives, and this connects up to the RGB controller. It's used for fan controllers, RGB controllers, and all sorts of other things. So it's fairly straightforward, but essentially this gives the power to the controller, which then obviously powers the RGB lighting on the fans. It's important that you plug this in Otherwise, you won't have that glorious RGB lighting. Now, you can see a quick shot here of two lots of NZXT fans. These are the duo fans, which you see on the bottom with the ring around them, and then the RGB core fans. I have done videos separately on both of these, as I'll link to those in the description. But the logic is the same. So if you're already aware of the duo fans, then you'll appreciate the logic setting up and wiring up the core fans is very similar. They both require two cables, and yet, obviously, have quite different RGB lighting effects. But wiring them up is fairly straightforward. Now, one thing I would recommend considering is a Y splitter or fan splitter cable. You can see this, I'll leave options in the description for what to purchase. Now, essentially, this allows you to do simple things like just connecting up three fans to a single system fan header. This can make it a lot easier if you've got multiple groups of fans. So three intake, for example, three exhausts, perhaps on the top, maybe another three intake on the bottom of your case, you can obviously combine these with system fan headers. The alternative is to use NZXT's fan controller. Now you can see this can manage up to six RGB connections, but it can actually manage more in terms of fan power. So you can control up to nine fans potentially from this controller. So it does both the RGB and the power. It is a thing that you have to purchase separately, but you can see that logic is the same as the RGB controller in that it needs SATA power and a USB connection, but it also comes with these three-way split cables so that you can connect up fan power to multiple ports. So it's interesting and it's worth bearing in mind that it will control the power for nine fans, but only the RGB for six. So you might need to mix and match it with the RGB controllers that are included with the fans, something to bear in mind. And if you use an NZXT motherboard, then you do have the option of connecting up the RGB cables to the motherboard as well, so that's another potential option. But for most builds, you'll probably want to use the RGB controller or this fan controller. Now, this obviously gives a lot of flexibility and frees up your system fan headers as well, and it makes things a bit neater because you can hide this way at the back of your case. So it is worth buying because then you can run the cables for the fans to the rear, and then you only have to really run that USB cable up through to the front so it's a lot neater if you want to maintain a very neat sort of front facing part of your case that is much easier you can see here with loads of fans plugged in it's going to get messy at the rear and even if you've 
got these connected up to your motherboard, it'd just be a bit of a nightmare. So it makes life a lot easier and a lot easier to control the fans and also just a lot easier to wire them. If you're not using that and you are using loads of fans, then you end up with loads of RGB controllers and in turn, loads of USB cables. You can see I've got four USB cables that need to be connected up to this motherboard in the build that I'm doing. And there's only two USB headers on the motherboard. Now there are various different options of things that you can do. And one of those things is to get an NZXT USB hub. This is an internal hub which can take up to four USB devices, connect them all up into this hub and then plug them into the motherboard. This makes life a lot easier, especially with a build like this where you've got multiple RGB controllers or fan controllers and maybe an all-in-one cooler with its own USB connection and other things. So you can plug all four of these into that NZXT controller and then that just connects with a single cable and to the USB header on your motherboard. And then you also potentially have another spare USB header, as you can see I will have on the Gigabyte motherboard. So it gives you the flexibility to install a lot more. This is actually a reasonably affordable purchase and again I'll link to that in the description. And it's fairly straightforward to install, similar sort of logic. Again it requires SATA power so you need a connection to your power supply unit. So make sure you've got those cables available because as you can see you're going to need a lot of them. If you're installing multiple RGB controllers for multiple RGB fans, you're going to need power for that. You're going to need power for the USB hub and you maybe need power for your all-in-one cooler. So there's a lot of different cables to plug in. but you know, basic logic is fairly straightforward and hopefully this has helped give you some insight and some ideas into how to connect all these things up. I've obviously demonstrated this sort of outside the case so it's clear and easy to see the wiring logic of it. But if you want to see a full detailed guide on these things, I am going to do a full detailed build guide on this case and I've also done one separately on the new Kraken Elite Cooler that you've also seen featured in here. But these RGB core fans have a really nice aesthetic to them and they're great looking fans with a variety of different RGB effects. So it's worth connecting them up. You also do need to make sure though that you connect up the USB headers to your motherboard from the RGB controllers and then download NZXT's CAM software because that enables you to then uh, control the RGB lighting of the fans so you can see the RGB in various nice ways. If you're using the fan hub, that will also allow you to control the fan speed. Otherwise, you'll need to do it through your system BIOS settings or through your motherboard software and tweak the fan speed and fan curves in there to adjust the speed of it. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions. Subscribe if you enjoyed. Thanks very much for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.